If you could customize your Total War campaign, what would you do with it? That's what we asked some of your favorite Total War creators. From giving yourself or the AI increased resources, to affecting the AI's personalities, to randomly assigning start positions, and more, Total War Faro features campaign customization which allows you to tailor your experience to however you'd like to play. In this collection of settings by Arcard, we find ourselves with an economy that would make Mansa Musa impressed. The high resource deposit setting allows us to swiftly build up our armies and settlements. As we conquer lands, we'll be able to quickly field several large armies, and with character movement set to high, we can further extend our reach on every turn. And they will be led by fully equipped generals, leveled up. But we must beware, because attrition will really hurt now that we've set attrition intensity to high. Fortunately, our card has decided to balance this out for us with unit replenishment set to high as well. We should choose our battles carefully though, because if we end up in one, we have no choice but to fight it. There is no auto-resolve and there is no retreating. But this would all be too tame if it weren't for the chaos introduced by our next settings. With public order and rebellion thresholds set to low, we'll need armies not only on the front lines, but also at home. A great leader might be able to appease the masses. However, it's always a good idea to keep an army in backup in case there is a rebellion to squash. And of course, to add to the chaos, we've got random starting positions turned on for a truly unique experience each time we start a campaign. With the shroud turned off, we can see the entire world and who starts where. Perhaps you could use this to your advantage and make some good alliances. Although, good luck with that, since the AI will act extra aggressively. If you thought the last one was going to be chaotic, you've seen nothing yet. In the aptly named Mayhem Simulator, Zerkovich has cooked up a campaign that is going to be nothing but war with the highest tiered units. We've got high starting budgets, high resources, and high research rates, guaranteeing that you'll end up with tier 4 or 5 units in no time at all. Additionally, with high recruitment capacity, fully equipped and leveled up generals, as well as rebellions toggled off, we're going to bloody war. Expansionism is the name of the game, and we're going to be conquering the world. Attrition is no problem here, as we speed through deserts and mountains to get to our next destination. Battles are on the menu, and today's special is long pay. Clearly, Zerkovich is a fan of melee combat. There will be no retreat from any battle we choose to fight, and with the ammunition from our archers severely limited, we'll have to take it up nice and close. Is it really a fight if you can't see the whites of your enemy's eyes? And to make it true mayhem, Let's go ahead and shuffle up the starting positions, as well as the personalities of the AIs around us. Perhaps we'll see an Irisu starting in the Egyptian desert, who wants nothing more than to sit down and have a nice cuppa, while gossiping about the latest happenings in amongst his soldiers. But campaign customization isn't just about making the craziest and most chaotic campaign possible. Andy gives us a different take on campaign customization, with one that'll give you a good challenge for a completely different reason. Here we have no resource bonuses to prop up our armies, so we'll be taking it nice and slow. To start off with, Andy's enabled the Iron Man setting, which will prevent us from manually saving the game. Every action taken must be considered carefully, because there are no takebacks and we can't replay any battles. An interesting combo is giving us high movement while turning off diplomatic penalties for trespassing. We can now go on the march and not necessarily attack the people next to us. Why attack the big bad wolf when he's living right next to a piggy in a straw house? Andy continues the trend of forcing us to play every battle and considers the only righteous path to be the path forwards, but makes an interesting deviation. Clearly a man of culture, he's given us high ammunition capacity for our ranged units. This means that we can pelt the enemies from afar, while avoiding damage ourselves, unless they shoot back. Well, 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 looks like we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned shootout. <laughs> That's terrible. 
It makes sense that when you give someone the wheel, the first thing they're going to do is rev the engine a few times. And Lionheart is no different. We've got a selection of settings here that should throw us into some lovely bit of turmoil. Firstly, we scramble up the world and the mines in it, and then we give them lots and lots of money. The world of politics is a tricky one, and when everyone thinks they should sit at the adult's table, chaos ensues. With pretenders to the throne set to high, practically everyone and their mothers are going to present themselves as the rightful heir to the kingdom. And it's not like we can make others like us with the forbid trading setting turned on. We're unable to trade our resources with other factions, so we'll have to gather everything ourselves. As if political turmoil wasn't enough, we're going to see a lot of strife within our own lands, with disasters hitting much harder than normally, and the Sea Peoples posing a bigger threat in the endgame. We'll need to secure our place on the throne and fortify our lands to an almost ridiculous degree, because when they arrive, the Sea Peoples will arrive in force. Frankly, there are a lot more settings we didn't cover in this video, which allows you to granularly customize the campaign to your liking. You don't have to go as extreme as we've done in the examples here. Perhaps you simply want a normal campaign where there are no rebellions, or one in which you can choose any god from the beginning. Or perhaps you're a god gamer who wants a bigger challenge in the endgame after you're done conquering and solidifying your hold on the lands of the Nile.